for the female form will start on the inside. All right. So, over it. Can I raise it? I want to make sure I raise it. That was so one time that it wouldn't come out too clear. Mm -hmm. So the ovary. On top of the ovary, on the uterine tube here, you have these little finger-like projections called fimbriae. Okay, it is on there. Okay, so the fimbriae are going to help open up the ovum, expel the egg. The egg's going to lead into the uterine tube. So all of that is uterine tube. You see how now it's going inside this pouchy area? Mm -hmm. So that entire pouchy area, that's going to be the uterus. All right, all the way to here. You see that? closing right there, that's called the cervix, alright, that's the cervix of the uterus, so all this is the uterus, alright, inside you can also see the endometrial lining, and then you got the myometrial lining, that more muscular layer, it's myometrium, endometrium, okay, so from leaving the cervix, now we have this canal, that many, many, just both women, men and women incorrectly call the external genitalia, but it's actually the internal um, scabbard, it's, this is the, what the vagina truly is, so this is the sheath here. So all that's going to be vagina. Okay. All right. So now, as we come out, this structure here, can okay, everybody see that little structure right there? Mm -hmm. It's not on your list, but I want to make sure to clarify. This is not the prepuce. This is the hymen. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm sure, you know, every female has dealt with the hymen at one point in their lives, whether it's, you know, tampons or anything of that nature. So that's going to be that protective area leading into the vaginal cavity. The prepuce is actually going to be on top of the clitoris. So here, everybody sees that clitoris right there? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's going to be a clitoris in this little, on this model you can't see it very well. There's normally a little, what most people call the clitoral hood. That's going to be the prepuce that's on top. Its job is to actually help protect the clitoris and maintain the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, on the outside, we have the labiae. Okay, so that's going to include this larger external structure and then this smaller internal structure here. So number two on this one right here, that's labia minora in this case. Number one is labia majora. Now, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that on this model, it's done this way to help express, you know, the name, the true, trueness of the name, but the reality is women are built in different shapes and sizes, so this is not always represent. So don't use this as like a, you know, a steam thing by any means. <laughs> No, because, you know, some women, you know, they, get, they, they see it and it's like, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. No, it's just a model representation. So, no, I mean, you know, I, it gets, you know. I, I'm very into building self-esteem and all that good stuff. And that's one thing I, I feel, you know, I always discuss when I lecture about it. Because then it's like, oh, you know, a lot of times you actually see that the lobby menorah actually comes out more than the lobby majora. And then it's like, oh, that's lobby menorah, but that's actually longer, bigger than my lobby majora. Why is that? So it's just a name situation. I propose that this should be labia interna and externa, quite frankly. Mm, yeah. You know, or media and latera. You know, those could work easily well. But, you know, who am I asking, right? <laughs> All right, so now we have the muscle here. All right, so that muscle is going to be involved in the actual glandular uh, functions here. Okay, so this is the muscle bulbospongiosis. Some, some combine it here as well. So on this one, you can actually see it nice and easy. Whereas this one, the reason why it's actually taken away is so that way you can actually see the glands here. All right? So now, because of the way it's cut, it's going to be counterintuitive. The greater vestibular gland, have I good? So mm -hmm. the greater vestibular gland is actually the lower one on the model. So the smaller bead here, mm -hmm. that's going to be the greater vestibular gland. Okay? So that's the one that's actually going to be found closer to the vaginal opening. So you tend to remember it that way. Mm -hmm. This one has another name. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But for now, I'm just going to call them the periurethral glands or the less vestibular. I believe there's another name for it, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now. All right. These are actually found, as if you use the word periurethral, so closer to the urethral mm -hmm. opening. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see, did I miss anything? No, that's everything on the female model. Okay, so now 